Welcome to the Building Blocks of Life. I'm your boy, Tahuti Trismegistus, aka the root of the symmetry. And we are about to dive deep into the spiritual and subconscious significance behind each color in my whole new take on Roy G. Biv, which is really just adding white, brown, and black. All right, got to add my chi. All right, I'm Chase Clarence Calloway. Okay, I got to add my three, my three set piece. I'm just saying white, brown, and black. Very important when we're considering the universe and uh, colors that spirits may not label logically as colors, but we learn a lot from knowing the number significance of them. So this is me as symmetry introducing Roy G. Biv BB. As we've established, the first color that space uses to separate itself to become something from no thing is not a color at all, but light, pure light. Now, the thing is, the purest form of light is what we in English call white. Think of pearlescent translucent brightness condensing into a white star in the sky. Stars appear white no matter what color they are when you're on them because they are simply reflecting light. So light in its purest form is white. White light is the closest color we have for imagining what a spiritual, empty, heavenly space looks like. When humans imagine heaven, generally European type populations of humans, but we're in such a colonized world right now, we'll just say humans. <laughs> when humans imagine heaven, they generally imagine a big white sky, big white clouds, big white gate, there's going to be a big white man ready to judge them and let them know if they're worthy enough to go into this new space or if they're going to be banished into a totally different space. This is all because light is white when it is alone. Heaven is your idea of being alone with yourself. This is why we all imagine heaven differently, yet we roughly use the same colors based on how our consciousness has been conditioned to connect with these colors up to this point. Okay, I just gave you the alchemy, all right? We're talking about being able to just change everything. But of course, now we gotta bring it back to the balance, all right? Messenger of Mercury, I'm symmetry, letting you know that these colors do have a significance in playing out the natural story of spirit. So you can't really run away from the vibration of these colors because the point is the color is the result of the light vibrating at a certain frequency. So white light is the purest light and it's vibrating at a frequency of pure separation. And this isn't necessarily high or low. This is why life works in a circle. But the point is white is vibrating at the frequency of separating itself from space so it can imagine heaven. And now it's ego can become expressed inside of these circumstances that it is being aware of. Thus, this is why white doesn't exist, technically. White light, like black light, is actually all of the colors of the rainbow separating from themselves, okay? So think about white light, again, all the colors from the rainbow separating from themselves. Boom, spreading out, that's heaven. That's your ego just going out of its space. And then black light is all the colors of the rainbow condensing in on themselves, sucking in. So that's the opposite of your ego, which is your soul. That's what connects all the expressions of yourself, is how you reflect on your thoughts. How do you reflect on your actions? How do you reflect on your past lives? That's all your blackness, okay? So whiteness, your brightness, that's you being seen, going outside of your space. Blackness is you absorbing, reflecting what you see. And this is you connecting with what your ego is doing. And thus, this is why the ego and soul both need each other for a mind to communicate its dreams into reality. Simply put, an object that looks white is working to reflect light. An object that looks black is working to absorb light. 
basically, when spirit is using light to create the rainbow, all colors come out of white and go into black. All light comes out of the ego and goes into the soul. And then the more a spirit expresses light from its ego and then cycles it back into its soul, it creates a consciousness that allows itself to communicate its circumstances to other spaces. And this is how we build structures with our imagination. First, there is no thing, nothing, space. That's nothing, no color, just space. The moment space becomes aware that it is a space, it becomes aware that it's nothing, it now uses awareness. This awareness is the first light that separates its circumstances from other spaces. So now this space can use the white light brightness that is its own ego to separate from itself. And this is it expressing its imagination in a way that no other spirit around it could. That's the point of all of us being infinite individuals. So the spirit is the observer. It becomes aware. But to create something that it is aware of, it has to create light. And this is what white light is, the most separate idea that a spirit can have of its space. White light correlates to transparent light. And white light is a space purely projecting itself to be something instead of nothing. This is now where we can see that humans who identify as white are obsessed with projecting ideas onto others that allow them to colonize, consume, and control them, aka how all of North and South America was built out of the genocide of indigenous individuals who are supposed to be erased with the concepts of race that we are living by today, white and black. The thing is, white is too bright of a light spiritually to be seen by anyone else other than the space creating it, aka your ego is too separate from the universe for any other spirit to actually observe. Okay, so think about how your ego is all of your imagination that is dancing for you to be aware of how you desire to express yourself, right? But if you always expressed your ego, you wouldn't be alive. <laughs> you know, you would have a very destructive life. You wouldn't really have any connections, really. Like if you actually expressed your ego as much as you felt like, like think about every time you wanted to just project out and say something, no matter how it's going to affect other people, where you would be versus when you use your soul to kill your ego and you're silent and you're quiet and you don't project out those ideas that you feel like throwing into other spaces because you're connecting with yourself. And then this is why the universe is based on the soul, but it's created by egos who want to connect with other egos. So we're all using our soul to connect with each other. Hence, Zoroastrianism, fire, and water. You can think of fire being correlated to your whiteness, that's the redness, and then your water is your blackness, that's your blueness. So when you see all these white stars in the night sky, just know that the white light represents a space separating itself from the space it's inside of. So the stars and the body of water that the stars exist in, we're all made of the same energy, we're all made of the same material, that's the only way we could connect because we're choosing to vibrate our souls into this material that we are creating with our consciousness. But when you see that no matter what color a star is, is reflecting white, it's because spiritually, the spaces that are creating this cosmic circumstance to become a planet or a star are separating themselves from the universe that is allowing them to exist. Okay, so this is why stars may look like fire, but are actually water because everything that's connecting is water. But water plays out differently in different atmospheres because fire connects by creating air, right? So if my ego wants to connect with your ego, I have to create a mind with my soul. Now, this is the hermetic alchemy of knowing that your number one is your fire, your number two is your water, your number three is your air, your number four is your earth. And then you're transforming these to build a family first internally and then externally. Boom. And then that is your six. And then that expresses your consciousness. Your consciousness allows you to expand the universe. And now you realize who you are. Then you create heaven. 
I just took us through all the numbers, right? But hey, that's the point of Roy G. Biv BB, okay? So just know that stars being white is spirits expressing that they are separate from the night sky that is black. So the night sky, the black water, is what is allowing us to appear separate. This is why we all have to know we're individuals before we can connect, create the circumstances to connect with each other, and then we can express our individuality inside of a collective, right? So we have to create the sky before we can create a star. But the sky is basically the universe, and then the universe allows stars to exist. Because the whole point is the universe as water allows stars as fiery individual egos to exist. So now you can see how everyone is a star. Thus, one could technically say that white represents the light of spirit and blackness represents the light of space. White spirit and black space are two equal and important sides of an imaginary circumstance being made real. And then that's made real through the rainbow because of course nothing is black and white. Everything is infinitely colorful. Thus, white as a color is the number zero. White is zero because white represents an observer's circumstance being separate from every other circumstance in the universe. Spirit, as the observer, is nothing at all, and it uses the color white to separate its circumstance of how it watches itself become something from every single other spirit in existence who is also watching themselves become something. This is why your circumstances are always individual to you, always have been, and always will be. Thus, they have always been separate from any space that is not you, the observer of your thoughts and your feelings. If you can observe your thoughts and your feelings, it's because you are creating them inside of this circumstance that no one else can see but you. Every color you can imagine is contained inside of the circumstance that is separating white light. Now you know why God is white, Lucifer is black, humans are colorful, and demons are materialistic. Next time, we're going to get into your infinitely passionate individuality and how you desire to be aware of your circumstances with the color red. See you then.